In the previous video, I have introduced you to the course. Now let's focus on wave function collapse big picture. To use wave function collapse algorithm, we need to go through four steps. We need to read input, so the data that the algorithm will use, find patterns, we will provide the pattern size value to the algorithm, and we will this way find structures inside the input. We will apply the core solving algorithm, so the wave function collapse algorithm, uh, by uh, creating an output that we will also pass uh, the parameters uh, as uh, width and height of the output to the algorithm. And the last step is to create the output results. Let's now go to the first step, reading input. We start with reading an input. In our case, we will be reading a tile map. We will be iterating through this tile map, extracting tiles from it. We will limit our implementation to accept only rectangular input with no holes, so no empty tiles inside or a single tile outside of the boundaries of our rectangle. We will save those values, so the tiles, as uh, in a value container called iValue that is a generic class, so that our algorithm will be able to take all types of inputs, making the implementation more reusable. We will also map the values as integers, so each value will have its own unique index and the indices will be placed in an array, in a grid, instead of values themselves. Our grid will be represented as a jagged array structure, a version of multidimensional arrays. One important information about jagged arrays, the first square brackets accesses rows and the next one columns in our grid representation. This might be unintuitive for someone who thinks about a grid as a Cartesian plane where X and Y represents respectively columns and rows. If you have not worked with jagged arrays, please visit the provided link, it will be in the description. In our implementation, we will be using jagged arrays heavily, so it's vital you understand how they work. For the rest of the algorithm, we will be using a grid of integers. In the next video, we will be looking at how to extract patterns from our grid of integers that represents our tile map.